the evening, I'd love to introduce Chad Adams, who is the CEO of Medic Life. Uh, I joke um, with Chad while he's pulling up his, his slides. I call this the magic toilet. Um, it, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, he's going to tell you actually about all of the amazing things this toilet can do. Go ahead, Chad. All right, thank you, Katie, and it's a pleasure to join tonight and interact with this group, uh, group, and I'm actually looking forward to some feedback after. Uh, one correction, the founder is actually uh, David Hall, I'm just the president and CEO, so I was, I was brought in to, uh, I want to give him credit because this is his, one of his passions that he's brought along. So, so why don't we get started? I want to jump into the, the problem we're trying to solve. So uh, as you well know, chronic disease is among the most widespread and costly health challenges in the U.S. and in this nation. Uh, it's a leading cause of, of death, and death and disability as well. Uh, the sad part is, tragically, most people don't even know they have a chronic illness until it's too late. I'll just, I'm going to use diabetes as my, as I walk through these slides today, but if you look at uh, diabetics, you know, 88 million adults, 8 and 10 don't know they have it. That's, that's the underlying line issue we're trying to get after. To address this challenge, uh, individuals and care providers, they just need to see more visibility of their key personal health indicators. It's trended over time to enable timely, uh, timely prevention. And at Medic, we believe prevention through early detection is the best cure, uh, but the solution has to be incredibly simple, convenient, and just fit into your daily life. Well, you shouldn't have to do anything different. And that's really, really a, a good introduction into Medic's solution. So, we're a completely passive, uh, intelligent toilet that turns your waste into valuable wellness data. It's tracked, trended, uh, managed by our AI, AI engine to alert you and your physician if you choose to give access through certain epic of important changes in your health uh, for seven different uh, chronic conditions. Uh, our products are completely passive uh, with no user interaction required. All you need to do is use the restroom as you normally do and you can get, uh, you know, it doesn't get any easier than that. Uh, we also have a very strong uh, IP position. So we already have 65 issued patents, uh, I think it's over 50 pending now and, and provisionals uh, closer to 100 now that are planned for conversion this year. That's something that the founder, David Hall, takes in all of his, uh, his, his startups. Uh, very serious is making sure that we can protect our technology in the marketplace. So there's been a lot of focus on that. So let me tell you how it works. So, our platform is always anchored on secure data management. So David, our data privacy and security is paramount. We're both HIPAA and GDPR compliant. Uh, you know, as you use the toilet, so a day in the life of using, as you approach the toilet, you step on a scale to capture your weight and, and many other factors, uh, similar to calculate BMI and of course other uh, biometrics as well. As you sit down, key cardiovascular factors uh, such as blood pressure, SpO2, heart rate are captured. Uh, and when you begin to urinate, a small volume is actually captured before it's diluted into the, uh, into the water. Uh, and many key analytes, uh, such as urine glucose, I'll use, keep using that theme through the presentation, uh, are actually measured. We use a spectrometer, so it's light based. Uh, uh, we also look at, and I'm not keeping up here, sorry, on the slides. Uh, we also look at uh, key urodynamic factors. So, uh, specifically for prostate health. So the same things that you would have if you go to your a urologist, uh, say you're a dynamic test that they do there, we actually measure that at every time you go to the restroom. And at the end of the day, the toilet still has to be a toilet. Uh, you know, uh, and that is, we, we gotta have integrated smart features. Uh, so we have to have, uh, you know, common things like water, uh, you know, hot water bidets, uh, you know, heated seats, all those type of things. And I'll jump back in our second version, which we'll talk, we'll touch on briefly here in a minute. We also have uh, integrated point of care diagnostics. Uh, and so this is uh, really important for the target markets we're going after, specifically senior living communities. Uh, and that is so that we can do a lot of the screening and monitoring assays right there in the wellness centers. So as you know, most chronic illness doesn't happen overnight. That's why we trend and report the data, uh, you know, over time against clin clinical reference ranges. Our data accuracy, the way this works, is all about trending. So our accuracy improves the more you use the facilities. So here, here's an example of urine glucose. Uh, of course, we use this is one of the indicators we use to monitor for diabetes. Uh, you can see how the sensitivity and specificity improves over time at higher accuracy levels. This is one that actually is equivalent or better than the gold standard, which is uh, clinical chemistry, right? If you look at the assays there. So it is very accurate. And so what does this do? This, 
This can trigger users to go to their primary care uh, physician to share the results if they're not already doing so and perform additional testing, uh, diagnosis, and then if needed, go into treatment plan development. Uh, what does it do for the physicians? It's, if, if a person's on a treatment plan or even with the individuals, you can monitor its effectiveness. If they're not taking their medication or it's not working or they're losing, or, you know, are they losing weight or things changing, you know, that, that that treatment plan is no longer effective. You'll actually be able to see that uh, within the data itself. So let's jump to the, to the timeline. So really, let's, we have three products. Uh, so the, the first one is our, our Guardian product. And our initial, uh, initial release is going to be a wellness offering. So this only provides the data. Its intended use is for assisted living community as part of wellness programs that usually are under the direction of a, an MD or nurse practitioners. Uh, and it is just sharing all the data. So we're not doing any type of risk analysis. We're just making sure that that data is gathered and provided to their, their care providers. Uh, it's the same exact toilet, which is our 510K uh, cleared version, which is very critical for the discussion tonight, which is a consumer market. Uh, this is, allows us to do everything, but it also allows us to identify risks and uh, you know, go into a little more detail, share a little more information uh, with not only your family, if you choose to, but also with your uh, 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 primary care physician. Our, th our third offering is, uh, is Discover one, uh, version 1.0. This has everything the first one does, except it has integrated point of care diagnostics and, and very specific assays for gold standard screening and monitoring so that residents don't have to leave their communities or don't have to leave their wellness centers. Uh, uh, again, that's followed right behind. Uh, from a regulatory standpoint, we'll be submitting uh, end of this year, early next year for our 510K. Uh, we expect approval. Uh, there's very clear predicates and we perform very well against those in Q4 of 2022. Uh, Discover will follow right after that. We're also uh, uh, going into China. So we have the CFDA uh, submissions that are going on at the same, uh, same time. From a business standpoint, have to talk about that. We are currently raising our Series A, uh, which is $10, $10 million. Uh, again, the, what we're using this money for is to uh, continue our development and to get to our regulatory filings. Uh, we will follow that with the, with the Series B. Uh, this will really take us into the growth stage, uh, growth stage of, the, uh, of the company. Our exit plan is really uh, strategic buyouts. Uh, we're working very closely with Key Kitchen and Bath as well as other strategics to, you know, in the 2023-2024 uh, uh, timeframe. Uh, our team, we have an experienced team of expertise, uh, both developing commercialized medical devices, diagnostics, AI, deep learning, uh, data science, uh, also raising capital and achieve, uh, achieving planned exits with, with startups, uh, startups before. Even our founder, he's had over 700 million in exits over the last seven years. So a lot of experience, uh, a lot of experience in the business to be able to really commercialize and get this to market. I've also included my information up here. I'd love to answer any questions that don't get answered uh, as part of our, our discussion tonight. Uh, happy to talk through the technology, talk through anything else, uh, you know, if, if needs be. With that, I'll turn it back over to you, Katie. Great, thanks, Chad. Um, we definitely have um, some, some great questions from our audience. Uh, I'm gonna start with one of mine this time. Um, you talked about the future diagnostic capabilities, which, um, you know, my mind just starts, you know, turning. Tell us more about that. Yeah, so again, our, our two primary markets are assisted living communities and uh, the consumer market, of course, the kind of the high end uh, smart toilet markets is really what we're, what we're focused, on, uh, focused on there. Uh, for those, uh, assisted living centers, there's a tremendous amount. So if you think about it, if you have chronic kidney disease or you're late stage, you've got to be constantly monitoring, uh, you know, monitoring for that as, as you stage through that. So, you know, one of the things with the, the assisted living communities for the residents, they don't want to have to travel to 15 different specialists. They don't want to have to, you know, uh, you know, go out to be able to do this. So this allows them to be able to build that back into their wellness programs. And so they can do the, the, the screening and monitoring right there in their own, right there in their own facility. Great. Um, some practical questions here. I'm just going to group these all together. Uh, have your users found the toilet easy to use? How easily installed is the toilet and what is involved in maintenance, if anything? And then is it ADA compliant? So answer the last one first. Yes, it is ADA compliant. Uh, second one, 
it's a smart toilet. It still has to be a toilet. And so all the dimensions, all the fit ups, all the everything to say, the only thing unique you have to have is you have to have a GFCI outlet and you have to have Wi-Fi uh, Wi -Fi capability. Uh, similar to a smart toilet. If you're if you're installing one of those, that's what you have. But a plumber can install it. There's nothing special, uh, nothing special there. As far as the consumer, uh, from a maintenance standpoint, it comes with a standard two-year warranty. Uh, I mean, our reliability tests right now, as we're going through our verification validation, we're up to four to five years before we're seeing any type of early, you know failures or anything. So, uh, and if we do, we have extended warranties that are also offered as as, as part of that for the consumer market. Uh, for the B2B, for the assisted living, those are enterprise sales. Uh, so they'll have service agreements. So all the preventative maintenance, all the, you know, anything that goes on that will just be part of, uh, you know, part of the way the, the contracts are set up. Great. Um, so a couple of questions from the audience about um, cost. So what's the pricing model? Um, it, can it be CMS reimbursed? Um, and then there was also a question around, it seems difficult to retrofit a bunch of existing toilets, so. Okay, so I'll start with the last again. So yeah, this isn't meant to be a retrofit, this is a toilet. So you purchase like if you're replacing a toilet in your bathroom now, you go to Lowe's, Home Depot, if you're a consumer, you'll buy it online, they'll have a plumber install it. So we're not retrofitting existing, you know, existing uh, uh, toilets there. Uh, you know, as far as the cost of the consumer, Early on in low volumes, we're targeting about a, you know, smart toilets, if you go buy a Coco or a Kohler or a, just that has a bidet, heat a seat and everything, they're about $8,000, you know, eight to $12,000, depending on the, the model. This one has all of that, plus all these health features we're talking about, and we'd be starting at about $5,000 of BDASB on the consumer market. Uh, we have financing options that could be financed if you're remodeling your house, you could bring it, you know, financing with that. We also have our own financing plan that you could use as well. At volume and with some continued work on our spectrometer, we plan to get down to about the $2,900, $3,000 ASP at about two, year two or three. So it's getting closer, you know, moving, moving down market a little bit than from just the uh, kind of integrated smart user market now. Great. Um, a couple of questions from our network on how the AngelMD community might be able to help. I always love this question. Do you need elder care um, and home health introductions? Um, who are your who are your ideal strategic partners? And are you looking for additional physician advisors? If so, what specialties? So that absolutely. was a lot, but um, all about what we can do to help you. No, absolutely, and that's actually what I'm looking forward to as well. Beyond you know potential there's investors that are in, uh, interested in joining as well here, but yeah, I mean it's we have to do our design validation. The way this works is you have to collect data. You know, so you have to collect lots of data. So we'll be looking to partner with a few, uh, and we have a few right now, uh, strategics uh, that are have really good wellness programs. We can actually just integrate in to be able to do our design valid, you know, design validation. There also is a third market. It's kind of we haven't focused a lot on, and it kind of skipped over the reimbursement uh, on that last one, and it kind of touches on that as well. There is a with COVID and all the reimbursement that opened up on on uh, kind of home health or mobile health. As well as telehealth uh, with physicians, which you know, of course you can, on average, you know, get uh, uh, you know three to five hundred dollars per patient, you know, per year. And as what it does more than that is it actually allows you to double the size of your practice. So it allows a, a nice little revenue stream, and you can potentially go down there. What would that mean? Is you would prescribe it to a user, it'd be like a lease program, and then you would just have to follow the, re the six reimbursement codes every month to be able to do that. Additional reimbursements, of course, available with the assays, uh, which I didn't go into a lot of detail on the technology, just given the time. But why we chose this technology is it's unique is because it's very inexpensive and it can also be highly multiplex. So you can look at, so for example, if you look at chronic kidney disease, you can look at eight different, you know, you can look at the eight different things on that single chip for very inexpensive. So you can give it a very complete output for, you know, specific uh, disease, and of course, those are reimbursable as well, so. Very good. Um, speaking of your assays, there is a question from the audience on, are you partnering with someone um, to develop and manufacture those assays or how does that work? It'll be a combination of both. And that really comes down to intellectual property. And like it is, I've spent 25 years developing, you know, diagnostic equipment and assays and, you know, uh, genomic. And that's just what it comes down to is, is access to intellectual property. So in some of those we'll be using, you know, it depends on the, uh, what 
you know, what we're looking for, it's a protein, whatever we're looking at, the actual technology that we're using, uh, this PCR, others to be able to, uh, you know, be able to do the, uh, you know, the, the diagnostic. Great. Well, Chad, thank you again for being here. We have